Okay, so let's go over how to install the new one shock for the one wheel GT. And uh, this one is going to be easier than the previous one because you don't have to drill any holes in the rails. So let's get straight to it. You got one, two, three, four, which I already removed. That's the fender delete. Now you're going to do the bumpers. Before you do the pads, and you're going to slide it out. On the back one, you got four. It will just come off. And then for the foot pad, on the new design, you got one, two, three, four. It'll come off. Same thing on the front one. You got one, two, three, four. And then we're going to do the side ones. So for the side ones, this is T56 point, which I got from Amazon. And I'm going to leave a link in the description. Just loosen them up a little bit. And then remove one, two, three, four. Let me do it off camera. Okay, so I remove one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's just gonna come off. And I already removed the bottom cover. So this can just come off. And then you're going to disconnect the motor cable. And then let's do the other two bolts here so the motor comes off. Okay, so I removed these two bolts and just came easy. And this thing, I already removed the cover so it'll just come right off. So... Let's put this aside. Now I'm going to take one, two, three, four, and that's going to disassemble everything. Okay, so I remove these and we're done with the disassembly. So let's put these two on the side. And we, here we have the wheel assembly. The cable is on the right side. That's the front of the board. This is at the bottom. We're going to get the swing on. We're going to put it down. And then we're going to get those bolts one at a time. Put a drop of Loctite. I'm not going to put it because I keep taking this apart, but just put like a drop. And So we're going to put four bolts. Let me go ahead and tighten. Okay, so I went ahead and tightened all four. And we're done with the wheel assembly. So let's put this aside. Okay, so now make sure that you place those in the right direction. Okay, so that's the front of the board. The GT logo is going to be on the right side. That's the turn on switch. You don't want to get confused and put it this way because then you'll have to redo it. So make sure you got it in the right direction. And we're going to put the main support. And the main support, this is forward toward the front. 
Then you're going to get something like this. lock tight and then place the knots so turn those all the way in but don't tighten them let's do the same thing on the other side let me go ahead and turn these in okay so I turned these all the way in but I didn't tighten because I want a little bit of movement here so I can place the wheel assembly same thing on the other side now we're going to get the wheel assembly just like that we're going to use two spacers one two and then we're going to drop this in Okay, let me put back the spacer. There we go. Now we're going to put one nut, same thing, don't, don't tighten it all the way. We're going to tighten them later. You'll know why later. So let me put the other one. Okay, so I've placed both nuts on the side. And now we pretty much are at like 90% of the installation. That's what you want. Okay, so now we bring the modules and you're going to slide the back part in and then you're going to lift this up going to tuck the cable in on the side right there at the bottom below this and that's it now we're going to place one two three four and another four on the front let me do it off camera Okay, this I did these four. Now I'm going to do the front part. And these are the short screws. Let me go ahead and finish all four. We are basically done. After that, it's just very easy. So why do we tighten these later? You want to make sure that this is sitting all the way and it's touching, which as I can see, it is sitting and I'm going to tighten this. Tighten nice and firm. You're going to be getting washers with these. They're on order, but for the sake of the video. Now let's do the other side. Make sure that this is tucked all the way. As I see it is. check they look good to me 
Now we're going to tighten this. And on this one, you're going to tighten until you can't. And then you're going to go back half a turn. Half a turn. There we go. Now we can put the cable in, the motor cable. Okay, I put the cable back in. Now we can do sensor pad. Let me connect it. The fender delete, we're going to cut it right in half. Let me put these two screws. Now we're going to put the other half. But I think I need to put the back foot pad first. Let me do that. Okay, now we can put this in. And being that the cut is behind the main bridge, you don't see it. So, let me put the bumpers. So, we are pretty much done. That was easy, right? Okay, so now the front part. Let's go ahead and put the shock absorber down. I found that this is safer when this is at the bottom in case we roll over this is protected so this is one we go ahead and tighten them and that's it Okay, so let's go over the shock absorber. Now you're either going to get this one, which has one valve, or you're going to get another one which has one on top, that's the top, and one at the bottom. The bottom, you leave alone. I used to put 10 PSI, now I don't bother, I leave it deflated. And I only pump the one next to the blue lever. And I usually start with 50 PSI. That seems to be the sweet spot. You can always go a little more, a little less based on your weight. The inside wheel, if you open it all the way, that's a fast movement. If you close it all the way, it'll be a slow movement. Most people are going to open it all the way. Usually what I do is I open it all the way and then I close five clicks, not turns clicks. So one, two, three, four, five. This one, if you close it, that's going to be locked. Now it's like you don't have suspension. Now it's open. Now you have suspension. So this is DNM. I get it from Amazon. It's a very good shock absorber. Almost as good as the higher end ones. So I'm um, pretty happy with it. Of course, you always have the option to upgrade with whichever shock absorber that you want. But that's a very good starter. The fender. Now, for the fender, there's a number of ways to do it. If you use on the XR, I used to cover the, the back part and leave the front open. There's ways to close the front if you want. So you have to improvise with it. When I did this on the GT, I uh, got the float fender and I'm very happy with it. So let me show you. So this is the float fender from the Float Life. It's $39 and it comes in different colors. It's got dampening cloth inside so it's very quiet and it's flexible so it doesn't break and at the same time it's long enough to cover the whole thing all you have to do is make a cutout for the shock absorber 
So you need to go in 10 inches and this is one and a half inch. So after you cut the one and a half, trim some space for the shock absorber. And you're going to use three quarters of an inch M5 screws or 1032. What you have to do, this is for the XR, but it's very close in size for the GT. So what you need to do is make the hole oval toward the inside. So just kind of like file down a little. Same thing here all four and that's going to fit. So let me go ahead and install it so you see what it looks like. Okay so this is the three quarters of an inch that you use on the XR for the fender and it's the same size as the M5 and I suggest you use washers so it holds it better but I'm just going to put it on to show you so this is one here. Let me do the other. Okay, so I did I did the back part. Now you just go like this. Do the other one. And that is perfect. Look at this. Covers it nicely. Now, after you install it, you may have to file a little bit of plastic to make sure that when the shock absorber moves, it's not touching anywhere. So I think that would be the best choice, but at the end of the day, there's a number of ways to do it. And the beauty about this is that you got the support here to keep it nice and rounded. And of course, when you get the fender, you have to kind of like play with it to get it nice and, and round. Okay, so I think I covered everything. This is the updated version. I'm happy with the way it came out. You don't have to drill any holes. And it's pretty much plug and play. And if you decide to remove the kit, the board goes back to 100% stock. Let's do a test run. So if you lock this, now you don't have suspension anymore. So let's take it back. 